Okay, I've got a, I think I've got you now. Have um, you got me? No. Yep, sure have. Um, Gary's in the green room. Um, well, I'm decorating, so <laughs> yes. that's a bit of a mess. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sell. I've got. Uh, I'll show you my my new residence. Mm -hmm. uh, hello. <laughs> yeah, this is my new cell. Oh, nice. Ah, uh, we left a wallpaper. It's a it's a bit yeah. <laughs> a bit of tropicalness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Beirut. Yeah, so you could say that, yes. Yeah. Jolly. So, uh, <laughs> this is where I'm going to be for a while. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Hey, you're looking out on some green. That's not bad. That's, that's, that, yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so anyway, I've uh, just listened. Uh, uh, yesterday to, to um, uh, Saturday's um, lecture. Um, I mean, what do you, I mean, I was, no, I mean, it was basically, it seemed to be addressing Buddhists or, you know, people who are inclined to, to sort of mysticism, orient, uh, orientalism. Um, but I don't know, but, but I seem to think that for him it was necessary to try and, I guess, in some ways justify himself to those who are you know, committed to, to Buddhism. Um, and uh, that, that seemed to be the reason for him doing it. It, it didn't seem to have, it didn't have any relevance for me personally. I mean, maybe it did for others. But, and, and you know, philosophically, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, but uh, apart from that, the, the only value that I could see in it was was for, for people who had already had a commitment to, to you know some Buddhist um, ideas. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I'm, that's why that was my take entirely. But I just thought he was saying you can't have noble truths because they're neither noble nor truthful and uh, if you do then you end up with buddha as a god and the only interesting bit i think was the separation of ontology and s and what's it called a speedy on s Yes. What was that? Epistemological. What kind? Epistemology. Epistemological. Thank you. Epistemology. So it was because of the epistemology aspect. This separation of epistemology and ontology, and I think that that was interesting because I think my take on it was he was saying that the reason that the epistemology didn't work at the time was because they didn't really have any science to base it on so they were trying to follow a rational argument and they ended up with this dualism um this is and is not it either is something or it is not something and that led them to certainties and that led them to truths and that's why we got the four noble truths but what would be more interesting is if he'd have pursued that argument to say, but if, if you take that into the present day, when you do have a, a better understanding of the nature of the universe, then would you get to the same point of view? And, I'd, and I don't think you do. I mentioned it in our group last night, and I said that I thought that if Gautama were alive today, then the argument would be different and that maybe it wouldn't just be a ethical ontological perspective maybe it would be broader um but one of the 
people in the group didn't think. I was all actually didn't think it was relevant to think of what Gossamer would be like today. I said it would be impossible to conceive of that. But actually, it's probably what we should be thinking about. Mm -hmm. Because if you're trying to put Buddhism into the present day, then you should be thinking about well, how what would it what would it be like if it was today, if he was alive today, what would it be saying? Um and I, you know, whilst it might be impossible to know exactly, well, I, think I guess know, this, this sort of people is, see is a good idea. seeing Gautama as a superman. Well, I don't know. I, I just thought, I think it seems to me a useful perspective, a useful starting point to, to actually say, well, what would his opinions be today? And would the teachings be the same? Or would they be broader, given what we know now? Hmm. Not sure. Because, I, I mean, if you say, let's take, you know, what we maybe glean as the kernel of a kernel of his teaching, like the four tasks, what would they look like in our modern time with our epistemology? Um, with our science, I think that is a very useful step. Um, but I don't, I'm not sure about the person because we are so bound in, into our era, into our, um, in, in, into our understanding, you know, most of it, like, you know, is our world and therefore transparent to us. We don't even know how uh, it influences us. So I, I don't think you can, for me, that is difficult to, to haul him, haul the person out of his time. Mm. I don't think that is, you know, I don't, he would fall apart. He, he's so of his time. Well, obviously not, I'm not taking up, we can't take somebody from history. <laughs> yeah. Now, what I'm saying is if that, that, those ideas came about in somebody's head today. Yeah. That. How would the, how would yeah. they be? I mean, it, it, so you know, if yeah. if that person wasn't born then but was born now, and you know, what would the those outputs be? What mm. would what would the, what would he be teaching? What would he be talking about? What would she be talking about? You know, and let's just assume that actually he was reincarnated. You know, because it can be. He, he didn't think maybe he could. But there was all these reincarnations, but this is he's been reincarnated now and he's a woman and she is teaching today. What would she be teaching? Hmm. Would she be like Stephen? I don't think so. You see, I. I Well, it is, it is an interesting thing that the teaching uh, still has something to say, you know, after all this time. And, and one would say uh, that shows that it is really not dependent on ontology, meaning that we need to know how the world really is, because we think that the world is very different nowadays than what they would have thought at his time. And it seems to survive that, that the, the, um, an essence of his teaching seems to be not dependent on it. Otherwise, for starters, we secular people shouldn't have anything to do with it. It should be completely um, irrelevant to us, but it isn't. So um, I can, I can uh, follow uh, Stephen's disregard of ontology there. Uh, not that ontology isn't, important for us, that, but that this teaching seems to kind of be able to survive huge ontological changes like have happened because you know, there was, there do, was do, his time. Do you mean epistemological rather than onto, ontological? <clears throat> well, it, it's because, a bit bound up, but I meant ontology. You know, if right, you say, right. okay, 
it, what they thought that the world was really like was very, very different from what we think the world is really like. Especially, you know, uh, and, and really even a, a, a strange secular sect compared to all the people who still believe that we are um, uh, beings made by God, um, which is still the majority, I think. So, and it, the teaching seems to be able to adapt itself to all these different ontological views and maybe even to different epistemology, meaning how do we find out? How do we know things? And it, it seems to even survive that. And not many things do, you know, not many things uh, stand the test of time like that because we would normally say, or, you know, so, so um, the Catholic belief, I don't think stands up too much in the way of modern epistemology, you know, this, that, that is just gets ab abstruse. But the teaching of, of the secular Dharma can stand up to our epistemology because That's we don't need to... Um, I'm okay. Nice. Yeah, Rachel, again. You still have a maid. I can't believe it. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> I can. <laughs> you know, I, I've had a, had a maid for, well, 35 years, and usually more than one. And I can't really understand how anybody coping. So, you know, what, what's going on with you people? <laughs> you, can, you, become, you can become accustomed to, to certain things can take things for granted. And in, in places like Indonesia especially, you're, you're, if you're, you are any, in any way sort of middle class or rich, you're obliged to, to have a, a pembantu, what they call a, a, um, a house servant. They don't really call them servants. They're sort of just people there that will help you. Um, it's a sort of diff different type of relationship, but you're, you're considered selfish if you do not have at least one, you know, Pembantu in, in your house, you know, you're just being selfish for not giving for somebody a job. <laughs> so yeah, you can't get used to it. <laughs> yeah, there's many, many different planets. <laughs> well, it was the same when we were in Africa. We were, people would criticize you if you bought a mm. washing machine because it, ah. you're taking somebody's job away and the uh, washing should be done by a local maid. Mm, yes. Somebody should come in and do your work and yes. your cleaning. You should, all of these things should be done mm -hmm. by other people because that was how the economy yes. worked. Um, and if you, yeah. mm -hmm. so I, I can quite see that. I'm not quite sure it works in Amsterdam, but uh, it's... Um... I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> but anyway, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I well, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know that the Buddhism is any more uh, useful than Christianity or Islam or Judaism. Um, I think that there are the core, the core teachings that we're getting to grips with, the secular bits, are interesting. Yeah. But I'm not sure whether they are what other Buddhists think are the useful bits. It, it sort of seems as though they're not, because if you have truths, um, which don't seem to be the same thing, and you have this ideal of becoming enlightened, and, that's, and you, you've got to go through these stages to become enlightened, but well, we don't think that, but most Buddhists do. So I'm not I'm not really sure that there is much difference between Buddhism and, and other religions in terms of their usefulness to their longevity, for instance, the fact that they've been going on a long time. It, it sort of seems to me that if Buddhism hadn't occurred as a religion, we would have less knowledge of Gautama than we do of Socrates. It's the only reason we've got mm -hmm the philosophy of Gautama is because it became a religion, not because of his teachings. 
I, I, that would be my, you know. No, you're, you know. you're right. That was imprecise. It is true that Buddhism, mm -hmm. I think, is no more uh, useful than Christianity. And uh, that what we might find useful in hauling into our sanctuary uh, is not uh, agreed by many Buddhists. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and we can probably find something in the Bible that we could find equally useful, but yeah. most Christians would say, well, you can't have that without the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. I think that there is some teachings in, the, in Christianity. Well, the, the problem is it's Christianity. If, you take, if, if it's just Jesus said these things, then yeah, there is some interesting um, philosophical perspective, very similar perspectives, in fact, to Gosmer's perspectives. You know, they, they seem to come from a, a, a similar uh, background, but then they got made into a religion. And but Socrates and Plato didn't get made into a religion. The only reason we've got their ideas is because they were written down and the book survived and other people translated it. And so we, and then they were resurrected. So we've got those ideas, but we don't have a religion associated with them. But we could have had, I mean, if they'd have been in a different culture, I'm sure the, the, the religion could have arisen from it. But, so that's what I'm saying about the ideas themselves. And that if Socrates were alive, if Plato were alive today, I think that it would be, I don't think, I don't think it's, it, it, it's not, unreasonable to think about those ideas being in play today and if you do then you think that they would be within the context of and in the culture of our our existence so really for me this seems to be an exercise in looking at the ideas the, the teachings, but own, but not in their original context, but in the in our context. Otherwise, what's the point in them? You know, th th there's um, um, interesting sort of vocabularies that, that I've sort of seen happening. Uh, people's use of the word. Dharma, the Dharma, a Dharma, Dharmas. Uh, people didn't do that a few years ago. I, I'm hoping that I can take a little bit of a credit for that, yeah. but probably. But you know, it, it's it's a question of uh, you know particulars, which are you know basically ways, and uh, there's you know many many ways, and uh, one of one of one of the ways is is a compassionate Dharma, as this is one of many Dharmas. Um, and, and the comp compassionate dharma seem to get turned into religious. So, you know, I think that's possibly, you know, a, a difference where you have these, you know, dharmas based on compassion, you know, such as you know, Christianity, uh, Buddhism and, and, and Islam, whatever. You have this, com this compassion core uh, of, of, of a dharma, the, the, the whole basis uh, um, of, of their wisdom is based on this this premise, this belief that, that compassion is is foundational. Um, you know, other dharmas, you know, there's, there's the dharmas of you know the, the you know, tribal dharmas, there's nationalist dharmas, you know, there's there's dharmas of hate and and whatever. There's, there's plenty of you know ways out there, you know, ways that people see the world, uh, but compassionate dharmas tend to get turned into religions, I think. Um, and, and so, it's, it's, I don't know, that, that, that's one way I'm thinking about it at the moment. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, oh, interesting. I'm not so, so sure. Yes, well, I, I think it might, well, I think it might be more to do with the salvation. <laughs> what did uh, he call them? Um, Stephen had a word for the soteriology. Soter yes, so, oh, soteriology. Soteriology. Yeah. 
how how salvation works. <laughs> how salvation works, because it, it, I mean, all of those other all religions have at their core the idea of salvation, mm. and that and that's what you don't get in philosophy. There is no uh, not only philosophy I know. <laughs> it's a gloomy <laughs> affair. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not realistic. You know, there isn't isn't a salvation. There isn't any. There isn't a God, and there isn't a, there isn't a heaven. Um, so this is it. This is what you're stuck with. And that really, to me, is the difference between what we're looking at in terms of you know, Gautama's Dharma, his, his teaching, and Buddhist Buddhism. Because in Buddhism, there is salvation, ultimate salvation. There is enlightenment. There is freedom from um, rebirth. Mm. And in Christianity, obviously, there's you know, go to heaven, and uh, in Islam, I I think, the same. Um, sorry. That's all right. I, would, I, I, I just think that it seems to be that the idea of salvation is there. It, uh, yeah, we're, I'm here. Yeah, we are here. I hear you, Rupert. Yeah. We are good. Lost Gary again. I think what is it about you, Gary? I mean, Amsterdam. It's, I mean, this is, it's worse than when you know. were in, in, <laughs> yeah, yeah. in Indonesia. A boat in Indonesia. Do you, you think better reception? I know. Do you think your link is still bouncing to so. Indonesia and coming back? That might. It's now no, double no. the way. Using Wi-Fi here. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Using the Wi-Fi, uh, maybe I should get a, a SIM card. Use 3G. But I just hopefully you can hear this. But uh, um, I was, I've been watching a few uh, uh, um, documentaries over the past couple of weeks on on societies. Uh, one interesting one I saw a few days ago was about uh, so-called pygmies in in, in Congo, uh, and they they. We're just asking people, you know, in a, you know, the question, you know, what is the meaning of life? And, uh, you know, they come straight. What is the meaning of life? Meat. That is all they're focused on. There's nothing more important than meat. And then he corrected himself and said, yeah, meat, honey, and water. That is it. It was just so emphatic. And so, sort of, you know, well, isn't that obvious? No, th 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 these, these, are, these are people's dharmas. These are the people, people these are the people way. And his only way, that the only thing that was really meaningful was meat and water. And so you, you, can, you can sort of see the way that, the, you know, a person's dharma might develop, you know, obviously influenced by their environment and, and uh, the, you know, that their, their social structures, such as they might be. Um, but yeah, the, the, I guess Gautama's uh, uh, Dharma is very much focused upon, you know, a more civilized, um, uh, if you want, basically much, much bigger um, social units. And uh, so, so these dharmas are basically trying to sort of come to terms with, with uh, large populations aggregated in the same place and, and uh, with, with no sort of uh, uh, protocol to sort of get along with each other. Um, but anyway, I just thought it interesting that, you know, ask people, you know, what's the thing of life, you know, meat is not the answer that, that most people expect. Do you really trust those documentaries? I mean, isn't it for me that? I, uh, yes, I know. Well, yeah. yeah. Because was, there uh, were a couple of, I mean, I immediately sort of thought, you know, the, the way these questions are asked and, uh, and, the, and the vocabulary that's used and the symbolize, symbolisms and all, the, there's a, way, a lot of things that can go wrong. Yes, in, in that sort of I, I would, he, I would he think so. Ask it in a, in a few different ways. Mm. He, he did ask, it was asked a few different ways. So I'm sort of, you know, convinced that you know, and in the way that they responded, that you know, it was a matter of sort of saying that it's obvious, isn't it? We need meat. 
this is what we do. We hunt for meat. I this mean, I would, do. for example, uh, is that, is, no, this is a lot. If I, I could imagine that those are the variables, the things that you do not, you know, they are the, the uh, inconsistency. You, are, you sometimes have meat and then you don't, or water, you know, you need it, but you don't always have it. Um, and so that might get mm. really focused in one's mind, but it is possible that all the other things, the richness of their culture and how they interact, that that is seen as very stable and therefore more transparent. It's, it, we don't even need to talk about how we treat our women, uh, you know, what, what it is to become a man, because this is all in, in, in very predictable, there's, there's no inconsistencies about it. It follows mm. its path. And therefore, we don't even need to talk about it because that mm. is just a given. Whereas the one thing that uh, is contingent mm. is meat. And therefore, that's where our brain power is focused on. You know, the rest just runs. And it, it would completely mm. miss mm. All, all the, mm. the, what would be for us their culture. You know, because uh, that is just embedded and therefore um, unconscious, I'm, totally unconscious. For example, yeah, I, I think that's a very good point. Yeah. I mean, what do they ask? I'm not do sure they ask them, what do you believe in? I'm not sure that that's. Uh, this is the thing that I, I'll I, I'll find the documentary and I'll show it to you, and you can sort of see the what that they are actually ask in in slightly different ways. Um, you know, one of the questions was, you know, what happens when you die, for example? Mm. And he says, I get put in a cave. So there was really, you know, there, there was a conception of death, but it was, there was no conception of afterlife or, or sort of, you know, merging with the universe or any sort of, you know, story. I get put in a cave. You know, that was it. It's, you know, very raw. Uh, and, and, it, <laughs> and confronting in some ways, um, but you know, I get I mean, th these are you know obviously people who, they didn't look you know unhealthy in any way, they seem to be you know he healthy human beings, but their the, the, the struggle for existence was just ongoing and non-stop. They didn't have to, um, you know any any food they got was just eaten straight away or, 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 or at best uh, are kept for a few days, you know, that, that, that's, the, that's their entire existence, not, not just for a few days, but every single day was, 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 that was, the, the, that was the, their way, that was the way they did their life. Um, no conception of afterlife or, you know, um, the universe or any of these sorts of things. It was just, you know, their immediate focus, meat, and then, and, and 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 this guy popped up. We need water. Water, um, you know, water. If you don't eat drink water, you die. So you know, all all these things sort of point to sort of you know very fundamental um, concerns, um, and and those for for, for that. Tiny ability was were, were pretty pretty clear. And that's not the sort of thing you could turn into religion, I don't think. So you know what what happens at, at, at that level? You know what happens when you sort of get huge aggregations, very large aggregations of people put together and saying get along. It, you know, I, I guess that's why so many dharmas emerged during sort of, you know, the, 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 the state building or, or uh, phase of, of human history, you know, three, four, five thousand years ago. Um, transition from, it's not even a transition, it's sort of a very transition, uh, a nomadic existence, completely nomadic. And a, a semi-settled type of in which people have more to, to sort of uh, to, to meet and then to, to aggregate. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think that. Not sure I'm going with that. Well, if, if you're in a 
nomadic existence, why do you need religion? Really, you only need the religion if you want to control people. <laughs> and yet, you know, you're gonna if you want to control people, you, you need a lot of people all together that you can control, and they, so you need them in settled communities. You know, if you, if you look at traditional African, if you like, religion is, is animism, it, and it, and that is not a hierarchical religion. There is no. Mm. Uh, they, they just it doesn't exist but animism is just effectively a belief that it's a bit like buddhism it's a, you know, or, or, no it's more like Taoism. It, it's a sort of it's the sense that everything is alive that the, the, the whole world everything mm. that you see has has spirit has life rocks have life water has life animals have life everything is alive um like we are, and why mm. shouldn't they be? And our ancestors are alive. Um, you know, the, everything is is it is it is the world full of of life. And I think that that, but that's not a religion. It's a it's a it's a sort of spiritualism, if you like. But it's not a, an organised religion. And and you don't go to church. You don't. And there is no hierarchy within this and th there isn't a sense within that that it can be organized into a religion and so that when you've got other religions coming into Africa Christianity and Islam they're the ones that create the religious structure and they're the ones that tell you to go to the mosque or the church and to pray and to sing and whatever and to read the books and to organized within this this structure so i i, I think you know, i don't know what i didn't see the pygmy uh, documentary but you know, it would it, i suspect if they have any religion it would be an animist one because that's what most people in africa uh, believe before they had any other um organized religions and it might be not talked about because what is there to talk okay, about? Oh, well, exactly. I mean, I've, you know, I, 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 I know about it because I live in Africa, but I mean, I, mm -hmm. and, and because I've read about it, but mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Africans don't talk about that particularly. Mm -hmm. um, the one guy I did talk to about was was actually he only talked about it when he converted to Islam, which I thought was quite interesting. So maybe then he was comparing it mm -hmm. with another mm. religion which he had now adopted um, because then he was talking about witch doctors and the power of them mm. and so on and, and but before that we would yeah we would just we, we would we wouldn't discuss those sorts of things it just like like you were saying it, you know, healthy was saying it was just yeah that's just life that's just how things are Well, I guess when people date in, in larger numbers, is that there has to be some sort of uh, social contract, common understandings, uh, common, um, you know, um, and, I, and I guess, you know, that, that could be, you know, one of the bases of, of, of uh, you know, the necessity um, for, for religion is, is to, to have common social contracts, to, to Common understandings of uh, of you know, you know, manners, beliefs, you know, ways of doing things. Um, I mean, I mean if, even you know, very minor things in in Western culture, for example, or in, in West, what perhaps used to be in Western culture, like for instance, opening door for for, for uh, a woman, for example, for a man. It's just accepted that a man opens a woman for uh, opens a door for a woman. You could sort of put all sorts of, you know, uh, judgments about, you know, what that might represent, but it's, it's a convention. It's just the way things are done so that people know that that's what people do. Or, or you know, these very tiny sort of little social conventions that people do that basically make life easier for, for society as general. These small rules, um, which, which, you know, might seem minor, but, you know, together they sort of form a, a contract you know, that 
you know, this is the way we do things, this is our way. Um, well, even, even in, well, I hear that in, even in Sc Scandinavia, perhaps even in, in Holland, uh, that, that, you know, men will, what, what, is, what, what actually happens? Um, Women are sort of given a first place in, in a lot of situations, which don't happen in, in other Westerners. Um, and, and that's not the thing, you know, it, it, it seems to have been um, Which, you know, given the, the sort of you know, confidence that, that uh, um, women in, in, well, in Europe, or, well, Spain and well, you know, Germany and Netherlands and whatever, uh, they just seem to be. They seem, they seem to be more confident compared to to to, to Western women in, in Anglo countries, for example, in uh, you know, UK, US, Australia. Uh, that there doesn't seem to be that there is not that new social contract, uh, uh, and and that there's not that same confidence. Women don't have, have the same confidence in Anglo cultures. I mean, you haven't met my daughter, have you? Uh, just looking at the way things appear to me. Sorry? I said you haven't met my daughter. <laughs> You're talking about women in... in I might have uh, lost you. Uh, I'm not sure it's the case that... Uh, you've frozen again. Mm. You don't know me. No, my goodness. I don't know. I, I mean, to bring it back, I, I thought last night it was interesting. Ah, no, no, continue. Go back. It, for me, it seems like, you know, a, a, Yes, you could see that <clears throat> Stephen is banging away at this ontology bit and that this is just task-based ethics and all that. And that, that we need to really get that and say, yeah, yeah, I get that after so many years. But I was just really surprised in our study group yesterday, you know, how easily it, it's coming back that even the people who seem to be fully paid up secular Dharma guys, um, would suddenly say, oh, well, actually, when you look into the suttas and how you actually do the, the, the tr four truths, how you go about them, it gets very pragmatic and they don't look at all different from what Stephen says. So what Stephen says is actually not new and uh, not that um, uh, big of a difference because when you, when you get into the nitty gritty, you know, the truths get very pragmatic and very similar to what what uh, Stephen says. And then that, uh, you know, it was uh, uh, endorsed by another person in our study group. And like, yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. So, uh, you know, it's not all that different, really. And I say, whoa, you know, there's just a, a massive ontological jump here, you know, from religion, and that we believe in this and there's a God-like figure around and there's eternal salvation and, and to the secular dharma, uh, this massive jump and you just make small of it uh, as if it weren't a big deal. I, I'm fascinated by that. And I say, okay, so Stephen, and, and this is within a group that has studied with Stephen for you know most of us have been on a two-year course and 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 there's many on on the big course that uh, hardly have read one book about uh, from Stephen so to for him to bang on about it I think seems to be <laughs> still necessary you know to even with the uh, experienced people that this is no small fry that you to hold it out of religious belief. Yeah, I think you're right. And I, it, it, 
I find it, I was finding last night, I was finding quite difficult because there was, it was difficult to talk to people who don't seem to have the same understanding of what we were talking about. And I've, I've found this a couple of times, I've said things and then it, it seems just not to, it's as if you're talking to somebody in a different language almost, um, because they're, if you have a fixed viewpoint, then it, it's quite mm -hmm. difficult to find a place in the middle where you can have a conversation. And I, I think you're right. I think there is a, is a sense with some people that they, I don't know, I, I can't, maybe there's a sense that you've got, on the one hand, you've got Buddhism and you'd like to make Buddhism relevant to what it's like to be today. On the other hand, you've got us, which is to say, here are some interesting ideas and we'd like those, we can see how they might fit into a worldview. Yes, that's actually really well said. Yeah, there's one thing like, how can we make Buddhism relevant? And there is another view that says, have these ideas anything to say to me? Yeah. And I'm, I don't care about Buddhism, actually. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, that, and I feel every time I say, I don't care about Buddhism, I feel I'm just turning people off in that group because they just think, well, why are you here? You know, if you don't, and I, it's only the ideas. And, and those ideas have to be tested to make, to see whether they're relevant. And really, the only way they can be tested is by, for me, by using science. You, you, you've got to say, well, or personal experience. And personal experience is, is, has to be guided by science. Because if I have a moment of, of revelation and I see God, that, for me, doesn't mean that I'm going to be converted to whatever God it was that I saw. I have to understand why I saw that, what was happening in my brain that made me see that i'm not going to be taken in i have to know what happened <laughs> you're not going to be taken in no, oh my no, god I, how could not. god reveal himself to you yes no, it's not even possible yeah exactly <laughs> it's lost out <laughs> Unless I know what happened. <laughs> you would say, oh, what an amazing um, hallucination. Yeah. <laughs> you lost cause. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I sort of hope so. <laughs> I, I think this is, this is really, I, I, yeah, I think that's, that's summing it up. There's a, there's a, a divide in this group. And uh, and then a few satellites, but this is very it's. It, uh, so oh. really, that's why why Stephen is maybe that's why Stephen is doing what he's doing because he's having to work hard. Well, Gary, you're making a lot of noise. But... Yeah. <laughs> it's not a language I understand, mate. Um, we lost Gary, haven't we? Yeah. Move to the window. Oh. <laughs> can can you still still hear me? Yeah, you're back. Hey. Yeah. I, yeah. I could hear that. We can't see you, but Am I? Oh. I've turned the video off just to see if I can save some bandwidth. But it's not doing yeah. a lot of good. Yeah, yeah well, uh, we can at least hear you. Yeah, so no, that might be a good world, move. world countries in Europe. That's really mm. bad internet. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, I do like to see, see some moving pictures. It sort of keeps me engaged. So I'm easily distracted. So. <laughs> Are you now? <laughs> well, well, yes. 
Uh, anyway, ho hopefully this, this will be recorded better on, on the server so I can sort of listen to it and um, pick up all the stuff I've missed because the, the, the reception is really quite choppy. It's hard. I'm only catching about half of what they, everybody's say, saying, which is a bit frustrating. Yeah, I was thinking about what you're saying, Alfie, though. It, it, it happens also in the breakout groups that there seems to be a, uh, a difficulty in relating to things that Stephen's talking about. And quite often, what happens is that it gets the conversation sidetracked to something that is more safe ground or is, is a sort of like, well, this is something I understand and I'll talk about that, but I'm not going to talk about what Steve was talking about because that is, is something that is new or maybe it's just something I don't accept. I don't know. But thinking about it, it happened in the breakout groups last week uh, and they were, you know, we, we were talking about this idea, the idea of concepts to begin with, wasn't it? You know, what levels of concepts there were. And I would say, well, like, you know, there are concepts, as far as I can see, there are. There are. Well, I was trying to address the point, but other people were talking sort of around the subject as if, because it really had nothing to do with Buddhism. It had to do with what is a con a concept, and I thought, yeah, well, that's sort of that's sort of quite interesting. But there are only one. There is a, well, ultimately there's only one type of concept, and that's the one that you, you create. But in order for for other people it, in my group, clearly it didn't make sense to think of, in that terms. You because that wasn't thinking about Buddhism. So why were we talking about it? We should be talking about Buddhism. And so they started talking about some other aspect, which was sort of how they felt within their, their, their Buddhist life. So it is this difficulty of, of trying to meet somewhere, trying to find somewhere where you can have common ground. And that it's not easy. And, and I think perhaps that's what Stephen is trying to do is to, is to say that like, you've got to shape your belief in Buddhism. Because if you follow these rational arguments, you can see the flaws in it. I mean, Gary last night, not our Gary, Gary was it born, is his name? was talking about he teaches and is teaching at the moment for noble truths. Mm. And you thought, well, hang on, <laughs> have you not been listening? Because do you not question what you're teaching? Yeah, I was just flabbergasted as well and said, how can you teach this stuff? Yeah. How can you, how, how is that even possible? <laughs> yeah. Well, and that because you have to believe it's true, presumably, and that, and and that then that comes down to a belief, it, and there isn't, you know, it's not evidence based. It's a sort of I just believe this is the case, and you say, oh, blimey, and you're teaching people. I mean, it's a yeah. I don't know. I find it. I, I find it that quite. Tricky. <laughs> I think that would be for me, uh, you know, as as learned as these people are, and they they know a lot about, you know, so much more than I ever will know about all the suttas and all that. Um, but when you, it, it seems to me that the secularity is skin deep. As soon as you scratch, and underneath is the religious bit. And they are attracted to secular because there's many, many troubling things in the religious bit. 
It's a bit like you know, in, in, in Catholicism, and then you get to the Immaculate Conception. And it gets a bit tricky in our age, you know. And you say, well, wait, maybe I'll leave that one out, you know, or because that is that is just a little too, oh, that, that might get me in trouble in, um, at the dinner table talk. Um, but actually, it is still handled as a religion rather than as a philosophy. And I couldn't, I couldn't listen to, I, I couldn't be part of the live thing, so I didn't take part in the discussion groups. But um, it, in, in the previous discussion groups, there were more Buddhists around than philosophers. And actually, I think that that is a, a really big, you know, yeah. uh, religions are more popular than philosophies, aren't they, in, in general, I think. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. And and because and so I I I go with Stephen when he go bangs on about soteriology and say, Oh god, do I need to know that? But but there are so many people who really do need to know it and and to understand a little bit what it what this move is from religion to philosophy and that what what do, we need to understand the nature of religion its hierarchy and its soteriology this thing of that and then there will be a better life sometime you know we all gonna yeah. get saved and and if you don't understand that i don't think you'd be um sufficiently clear about what the secular move is and, and that it isn't a small move, and it's there in the original suttas already. And I said, oh, God, you know, just, <laughs> that, is, that was a, just a real, a, a real eye-opener for me. It, that, that this is, this is, hasn't got very deep foundations for a lot of the people on the course. And if you don't do that, if you don't really feel that in your bones, uh, I think you might get into trouble there. Yeah. 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 Is it? I, yeah. No, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm trying to work out, trying to work it out as to, because I've not been there, because I've never had that sort of religion, never had a, that sort of, I'm not quite sure. Mm. I, I can't, you know, trying to put myself in that position. Yeah, I think, I think we, and we are the, the minority in that way, that we don't come from Buddhism and then, you know, this is an add-on. Um, it's the other way around, and I think we we are not the majority. I know there must be a reason why Stephen is going back to philosophical principles at the moment. There must be a reason. He's uh, gearing us up for for some move that is not clear to me already, and uh, I just have to you know it's it's like um, I, I really mean it. It's like the you know this move of you know there's something new coming from our from our um, star like Bob Dylan, and and there's a lot of unease about this, and and we we're not uh, altogether sure we like it. We f I I feel his insecurity about that, his uncertainty about uncertainty almost, <laughs> and, yeah. and 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 uh, how he how he then refers back to to his foundations almost in order to stabilize himself but also to introduce us into you know you need to know this stuff so that when i make the next move you won't you won't lose your footing in a way and yeah. i i i hope so anyway i hope that that is what's happening. And actually, I really think that's quite exciting because when when Steve moves, then it's always worth 
you know what i was more um getting cheesed off with him going over the same ground wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah well from our point of view we're we're already there i mean that's the point is that mm. we because when he was talking at the end of our two-year course he was saying i really want to give up this word buddhism i'm going to you know it's a problem yeah. it's holding back but he's he's recognizing i'm pretty sure that that's a very difficult thing for most buddhists most people who have come to buddhism to to let go of they're not going to let go of the word and and they're not going to let go of everything that it represents not without a struggle and that, I mean, do they want to? I mean, it, it, if all they want is to make this religion that they like <laughs> more updated, then why, why would, do I want to get rid of it? Why would I want to lay, leave it behind and only take from it those things which are ideas? It's, if it's more than ideas, if it's a way of life, and it and it has deeper significance than than ideas, then why would I let it go? Why would I leave it behind? And I think what Steve is trying to do is to replace it with something else, almost ready-made, and he knows he can't do that. Because he knows that if you, he, he talks about the way that Buddhism has adapted to different eras, and that's one of the things that's why it's lasted a long time. I actually think that's a big mistake. I, I, I don't because the thing that's changed is a religion, and the, yeah, religions change. You know, Christianity, no doubt, has changed to adapt itself, but I don't think that's a good wow. starting point. Interesting. I I never even thought that. Yeah, that's that's cool. You know, yeah. it, it's not that Buddhism changed. It's that there are some core ideas. Yeah. And that, yeah, they are, and they are interesting. But let's just take them and get rid of Buddhism. I mean, you don't. You, you let's take those core ideas and other core ideas, which are useful and interesting. But to tie it onto the to, to modify Buddhism to the present day, I don't think is the right approach. Mm. Anyway. It's hard to get the religion out of Buddhism, isn't it? <laughs> it is, you can't do it actually, perhaps. You you, well, you, I think you can't. And that's why he said, didn't he? He wants to lose the word. But if, if this were not called after Buddhism, or well, whatever, wherever it is called, then you wouldn't get these hundreds of people, I guess, on the course. I, I've signed up to another thing called the Middle Way, and I haven't actually responded to any of their stuff. I've been a bit distracted, but I think I, I will now. To, and they, they, they're a splinter group because they started from um, Stephen's talks, but they've gone off in a, I guess, in a more uh, secular way. And the, the fact that they're calling themselves the middle way, which doesn't have Buddhism in the title, maybe it suggests that they've come to a similar uh, conclusion. Wow. Ah. And they're, they uh, you know, I must admit, yeah, the middle way group. Yeah, I've got a, um, I, as I say, I signed up to it. Is that what, like a Facebook? Thing? Um, it was, a, it was on a, I can't remember whether it's Facebook or, it's called the Middle Way Network. And they, they've been going for a few years and then they changed the way that they were meeting. And I, so I thought as well, maybe this is a good way of, Good time to to join up, but they have a sort of similar thing in that they have a Zoom every so often with lots of people. Um, but the guy who runs it, 
uh, called Robert something or other. Um, he's got, I'm sure he's got a website. Uh, Middleway society.org. Let me just check. Yeah, um, so the, the website is Middleway Society, all one word, dot org. Mm, okay. Um, and The aims of the society are as follows, to investigate and promote the middle way as, as a practical and moral philosophy of universal application, independent of any appeal to traditional authority and avoiding metaphysical dogma, whether positive or negative, and two, to support all forms of practice that address conditions in a way compatible with the middle way. And so that's interesting, there's no mention of Buddhism, but that's they, they certainly came from uh, interest in what Stephen was talking about. But yeah, if we have a look and see what you think, mm, I will. but I will, I will sort of get back and see if I can actually attend one of their meetings. Well, Robert M. Ellis is the chair, and uh, he's a philosophical writer. He's developing, been developing middle way philosophy since 1997, initially from PhD, published a number of books. Uh, uh, so the Christian middle way, the Buddhist middle way, middle way philosophy. Uh, he was formerly a member of the Triatna Buddhist order, but is no longer committed to any religious tradition, although inspired by elements of both Buddhism and Christianity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a. I think that, that was, that's why I thought this was, that was sort of interesting. But then I, I, I thought it odd that Stephen never mentioned it. Um, anyway, yeah. Wow. Come on, we seem to have lost Gary altogether. Maybe he's just listening. Maybe he's not, uh, not talking. We lost his attention. That's possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quite. It's very possible. <laughs> well, it, it's so frustrating if it keeps. Um, if it keeps freezing, isn't it? Mm. Okay, well, it's been lovely to see you and chat again. Thank and you. Uh, um, presumably we'll meet up again ish on Saturday and then next week. Yeah. Well, I mean, because I'm a bit excited now. I, I mean, I really hope for that kind of wow, you know, that's interesting. Have you, um, read, have you read the latest one? No, I haven't. Whoa, I got halfway through, and it's it's quite interesting. So, um, is it called the five? Is that the five? Path? Yeah, the five. Well, yeah? five or four paths. I don't yeah, know or four paths there are. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's. I got halfway through, um, and it, it's it's again going back over stuff that we've covered before we've covered before but i think it's obviously new to to other people um 
So it would be interesting again to see how, but he is sort of hammering home this idea of, you know, you know, this is sort of secular stuff. It's actually ideas. It's not a religion. But we'll see. See how it goes down next week. Mm. It's an interesting read. Oh, must go on to it. I'm behind. Life has taken over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How are you settling down with the uh, with the uh, uh, stuff from from your trial? So is that? Uh, I've, I've sort of just it's... about got over it. But I'm well. I'd actually, I'm not. No, I don't think I have. Um, it, it it causes me causes me grief. Causes me to lose faith in my fellow person, my fellow travelers. But I'm not, I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why people were like they are. That's a, it's a bit of a problem. <laughs> why, why don't they think more? Uh, anyway, no, it's a... Um, but yeah, I've, I've sort of let go of it being my fault now. Yeah. which is yeah. but there is a I suppose yeah ultimately it's difficult it, it's just it was a difficult time um, and I'm just glad I'm not on trial you know you think well I think what's interesting is a concept of justice, because justice as an idea is an interesting thing. And what does justice mean? And you think that you've got a, a structure which can enact justice. And in this particular case, it failed, in my opinion, to enact justice. And I, uh, and yet, is this the best there is? You know, is, is, is justice more likely in another country? Or is this as good as it's ever going to get? So what's, it's, I suppose, it's the difference between having an idea and putting that idea into reality, isn't it? It's what we're talking about. It's sort of like, you can have all these ideas, but if, you, if, you, if they don't come to fruition, if they don't enact themselves, in, in the life, then what's the point in them? So it's a bit disappointing. It's a bit sort of hard mm. to, you know, you think, well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you can, you can have an idea for a vaccine to fight COVID and you can make the vaccine and you can get people vaccinated and they don't die. You think, well, success. But that's a sort of, that's science. It's not an idea. It's a, it's the difficulty of doing the ideas bit. I mean, and you think what's happening now with, I don't know whether, I mean, because I'm interested in football, I don't know whether you know, but at the moment, the English football team, because the Euros are coming up as an international tournament, and they take the knee, as all footballers in England have been doing for the last year. And for 30 seconds at the beginning of a match, they go down one knee. And they do it as in response to Black Lives Matter and because uh, this is, you know, they're making a point. And it, I think it's a brilliant idea because the amount of people who watch Premiership football around the world is enormous. And they must all be thinking, well, not all of them, because some of them know why, but they'll be thinking, why are they doing it? Ah, and that's all you need. You just need to people to question, because it, then it's a fantastic advertisement for thinking. You have to think. But what's happened now is that they've had two friendly matches prior, England, this is England, prior to the tournament. And at the first one, they were booed by the people who had got in, <laughs> only a few thousand of them, but one, they were taking the knee. And and then the second time it happened, they were booed, and, but they were cheering as well, where there was clapping, was applause at the same time. And there was an MP, whose name I forget, 
who has said, oh, it's a, we're quite right to boo a Tory MP, obviously. And now Boris Johnson is saying, oh, well, I can see both points of view. I can see why it's okay to take them out. I can see why it's okay to boo them. And that's our prime minister. So it's okay to be racist, apparently, according to our prime minister. Maybe that's because he's racist. I don't know, but it, it's just depressing. When you've got, there is an idea there, which is racism is not a good thing. These people, many of them are young black men who have been racially abused um, are saying, well, no, it, you know, actually it's not, it's not right. We shouldn't do it. And they're making this small statement and they're being booed for it. And our prime minister is saying, yeah, that's all right. Boo away. That's shocking. Isn't it? It but is... they're not surprising. I mean, look at the man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I suspect he's not, but I suspect and hope that our Prime Minister is not racist. Um, but I'm pretty sure the reason he's doing that is because he recognises there are lots of racists who vote for him. Mm. And that's really depressing. And that is truly racist. I think that is truly, but if you think yeah, yeah. that, you know, you need to be liked and uh, or approved of in that way, overrides uh, an ethical stance like that, I think that is just what racism is about. You know, that, that it just say, uh, yeah, well, uh, I have a very good friend who is black, but in general, like, that is that same kind of, uh, of, um, Oh, racism it's hard it's, it's okay i don't know it's just it's tricky and a bit depressing but in fact quite depressing mm. very depressing yeah well, well that, happy that note <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, i went well, my garden i can see my garden out the window it's looking like this so i'm gonna go out and it's like mm. a sunny day i'm gonna go and look for some more bowls <laughs> I went to my first um, Greenwood, or second actually, Green Greenwood carving uh, group. What did you do? Uh, I'm just my. Uh, I made a spoon, and I met a guy who makes bowls, so I'm making another bowl. Oh, it's good fun. It's good fun. Mm. It's quite. I'm now developing Greenwood meditation techniques, which is quite, good, quite right? tricky yeah. because you've got a big axe in your hand. <laughs> Got to be careful. <laughs> to medit the axe meditation. Axe I'm meditation. looking forward to okay. the Okay, axe meditation. That's the next yes. one. Yeah. After drawing meditation. <laughs> yes. Life gets a bit more exciting now. <laughs> axe meditation. Yeah, yeah. Action. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, lovely to see you. And, and, uh, you. and we'll see you next week. See you next week, okay. huh? Okay. Yeah. Bye -bye. Cool. Bye-bye.